Today, we will be discussing the overall data warehousing structure, architecture, and concepts. First of all, let's tell you a little bit about what system that we're using. We're using SQL Server 2012, and it is residing on a Windows 2008 R2 server. So let's go ahead and take a look at the architecture and some of the solutions and concepts. So I'll come over here to the Start menu. And in the Start menu, I'm going to open up the utility that SQL Server will use to manage its databases, and that is the SSMS utility, which stands for SQL Server Management Studio. First of all, let's talk a little bit about what the overall concepts of a data warehouse can do, as well as its overall architecture. The idea of a data warehouse is to store large volumes of data to help make business intelligence decisions. For example, in a data warehousing solution, we would be looking at the data warehousing solution to provide us answers as far as how much money a particular zip code makes, or what the average age is, median level of education, those type of things. So for example, when you get flyers in the mail that says, come to this sale, that information has probably already been crunched into a data warehouse that says, we know in this particular zip code, these people buy this particular product. So that's the overall idea of a data warehouse solution. Now, what we can see here is that my SQL Server instance has already come up and it's asking me to connect to a server. It will prompt me for a server type and I have four types of servers. I can connect to a database engine, an analysis services, a reporting services, and an integration services. We'll discuss all of those within the data warehousing solution as we move forward. But for right now, we're gonna to connect to the database engine and I'm gonna to connect to this particular server name. This could also be referred to as my local host because this is actually stored on my local host. Let me go ahead and hit connect and let that display. Now we have our database up and running. If I come over here and I expand on my databases, the databases that we're gonna be using here will be the AdventureWorks DW database, and then let me expand the other AdventureWorks 2008 R2 database. Now, when we look at the architecture of a data warehousing solution, typically we're dealing with vast volumes of data. For example, a data warehouse is gonna be in the terabyte range, whereas an OLTP database may only be in the couple hundred gigabyte range. In a data warehouse solution, we're designed to access a large amount of data to provide us business intelligence. Performance is not that critical in a data warehousing solution. In an online transaction processing system, performance will be very critical because those systems, you have customers on the other end of the phone wanting to place orders right now. In a data warehousing solution, you're going to be writing large volumes of queries, producing reports, and sending those to management. So you don't necessarily have somebody on the other end of the phone requesting information right away. So the overall architecture of a data warehousing solution will be large amounts of storage, large amounts of servers, as well as maybe some sort of clustering environment to handle the throughput. Also, we will take a look at database diagrams. What we can see here is I'm going to navigate over to my AdventureWorks DW R2 database, and I have database diagrams. If I expand on database diagrams, we can see that I have some sort of database diagram here that will display to me the logical and physical architecture of the overall database. Also, we will take a look at our tables. When we expand on our tables, we can see that we will have a series of tables that are referred to as DIM tables. Those DIM tables are referred to as dimension tables. And if I come down here, I can see tables that are referred to as the FAC table. When you establish your data warehousing environment, you will determine different types of schemas. Typically, you will hear two terms. You will hear the term of a star schema, and you will also hear the term of a snowflake schema. Either one of these type of schemas include what's called FAT tables. The FAT tables are going to be the large tables that are going to be in the middle. Those are going to be your sales tables, your orders tables. These tables will be very, very large and very, very wide. Then we have our dimension tables, and our dimension tables are going to feed the FAT tables. The dimension tables will be things like zip code, ICD-9, area code. Those are going to feed the FAT tables, but won't necessarily have sales data in them. So the overall idea and concepts and architecture of our data warehousing solution will first of all be a very large database to provide business decision makers information on how to market their product. The overall architecture of our data warehousing solution will be a very, very large system. Our data warehousing solutions are designed to be in the terabyte range, very, very large, very, very wide. 
retrieve large volumes of data to help us make good business decisions. So that will conclude this section on database warehouse, concepts, and architecture.